Also, if you buy a kilogram, bottle one and bottle 358, are they going to have the same purity? If they don't, you've got to take that into account. Uh, and this is at the end, a new coometric method. Uh, this was a this, th the reason I did this was a joke, but it's serious. In coometry, I said, to get the most accurate integ integral, you uh, have a constant current. So you have, that's controlled constant current coometry. I call that CC coometry, con controlled current or constant current, CC. Takes place in the presence of a high concentration of the species from which the titrant is produced. You have a very high, like a 0.4 mole per liter solution of ferric ammonium sulfate. You generate iron 2 from the ferric ammonium sulfate, and that reacts with, for example, uh, potassium dichromate, a redox titration type reaction. Uh, you can also do the same titration for cerium-4. There's very little uncertainty of the integral IDT because it's a constant that comes out of the integral times how long the, the time is. Integral of dt is just the end time minus the beginning time. But it's poor selectivity. Anything and everything that reacts with the iron-2 will interfere. The other way is you can do controlled constant potential coometry called CP coometry. There, you can limit the potential of the working electrode close to the redox potential of the analyte. So anything that's not as strong in a reducing or oxidizing agent, depending if you're reducing or oxidizing the compound, uh, doesn't react and you get better selectivity. But the current, it is a exponential, whoop, it is an exponential decay from the initial current, it ex exponential decays down like this. And the uncertainty in the area under that curve is much lower than if it's a perfectly straight line. You can't bring that I out of the integral. Uh, so the, the typical uncertainties for this are the, on the order of 0.1%. This can be 0 0.005, 0 0.001% scatter. Here, this is 0.1%. And I, back 30 years ago, I derived a new way to combine both. You know, you can control the current, you control the potential. But I like, yeah, you can control both. Essentially, what you do is, and I won't go into the detail, because this is the real, whole reason for this is for a joke. But it, it, the, the science is true behind it. If you, if you, as the, with controlled potential, the current is decreasing because when you get down to here, you've electrolyzed half of the stuff, so the current's only half of what it was at the beginning. Okay, so the current goes down here, but then if you increase the mass transport to cover, increase the mass transport by a factor of two, uh, then you st get the current that you had when you started, it turns out. So like a, at a rotating disk electrode, the mass transport to the electrode is a function of the square root of the rotate, how fast the thing is spinning around. So if it starts at the beginning, wow, 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 and it slowly is decreasing, Wow, wow, wow. And then if it, if it were going at the same speed, it would go down like this. But if you go, wow, 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 wow. But if it comes down, wow, 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 wow. But if you go, wow, 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 you bring it, speed it up enough to bring it back to what it was at the start. So you can keep the constant current the same. So wow, 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 until in principle, it's spinning around so fast that the spinning disk electrode flies apart, like running a running a Alfa Romeo engine at 7,000 RPM. At some point, it's going to fly apart. That works. In principle, that works by controlling the diffusion layer thickness, which essentially governs the limiting current. And the limiting current, the current at a lower potential is a function that you, this is essentially a transformation of the Nernst equation, where the concentration that comes from, a, comes from this I limiting. This is what I wrote in 1982. Here, it's a linear decrease, and the, the, rot the mass transport rate is increasing to keep the, co the, the, the current the same until you reach some maximum value. Then you, from this point on, you do a controlled potential electrolysis. But the uncertainty of this part may be 0.1%, but the uncertainty of this part here is maybe 0.01 or 0.001 percent if you can control the mass transport well enough. So now you've leveraged as if it were a constant current 
which it is a constant current for this part, and only you have the 0.1% uncertainty in the tail of this curve. So that's hard to understand, and probably none of you understand that, but in the history of Russian humor, and also in, in the former East Bloc, including East Germany, uh, they have Radio Yerevan. Soviet Union, Yerevan is the capital of Armenia. And, they, and in Russian, it's called Armenian Radio. And Armenian Radio, it was on the border. They were a little bit more liberal. And they had a, a program where listeners would submit questions to Armenian Radio. And then Armenian Radio spoke like an oracle, all with a little bit of political twist behind it. And this will date where it came from. Uh, a typical one, and I'm familiar with it with German. It was popular in Germany in the 70s, more in East Germany than in West Germany, but West Germany you saw it a little bit. And a typical joke would be, uh, an Ameri in this case, an American listener writes to Radio Yerevan, Radio Yerevan, and then answers the Hörerfrage, the, how do you say, the listener's question. Uh, the listener says, in the United States, it is perfectly possible for us to criticize the Nixon administration. Is this possible in your country also? And Radio Yerevan, as always, the beginning, the answer of Radio Yerevan always is in principia, in principle, yes. So Radio Yerevan, like the in principle, yes. We are always perfectly free in Russia to criticize the Nixon administration. Typical Radio Yerevan joke. So, Given that, is it true that it is possible to simultaneously control both potential and current in a coulometric analysis, or to control simultaneously, I should say, the split infinitive? If some of you are sensitive to that, I apologize. Is it true that it is possible simultaneously control, to control both potential and current in a coulometric analysis? In principle, yes, this is made possible with the use of a variable mass transport rate at the generating electrode. But up until the present time, only one obscure American researcher has, ob has obtained success with this method. And then, additional question. And what designation did he give to this new method of coulometric analysis? Radio Yerevan answers. He called the, method, he called the new method controlled current, controlled potential coulometry. But if you're Russian looking at that, you see that, you see SSSR, which is the USSR in Russian. You may remember the Olympic uniforms from back before the change. They said, look like, like CCCP on it. That's Soyuz Sovietsky Socialistichesky Republic, SSSR. So you see it in Russian. So here the American is calling this USSR kilometry. That's the joke. You have to have it explained to you. Uh, just a little bit. This is Elena Sabina. She is the woman who invited me to go to Yekaterinburg, where I went last October. This is Michael Winchester, who's my former supervisor, uh, and he is, he's the group leader, but his sp particular specialty, in addition to nanochemistry, which he's active in now, is the spectrometric solutions. The slides that you saw on the spectrometric program were from him, translated into Russian and then back into English, so they'd be a little bit different than what they were from him. This picture was taken last April in France. This is the BIPM. The building from here, the building about 100 meters that way, is the building where the standard kilogram for the, for the world is kept in a safe in the basement. And the, the president of France had a key, has a key. The president of the BIPM, who was the head of the group that wrote this recommendation, 2002 recommendation on pH, uh, Martin Milton, very British. Uh, Martin Milton, uh, he has a key. The president of France had a key. And I forget, the, there's another the third person has a key. It's a president of the Senate of France or something or other like that. Any questions? And this is here when I gave the talk in Russian. This was the professor from whom I studied Russian language and literature. He's actually Lithuanian, Bronius Vashkilis. And uh, there was a Russian, very conservative, ultra-right-wing type guy, uh, Yuri Semensov, who uh, was a chemistry instructor. And they teamed together, to, teamed together to give me a special course on scientific Russian back in the mid-'70s. And you're probably now totally bored. Are there any questions? Yeah.